So welcome to the Streamzy community call on uh, 30th November 2023. Uh, get the recording on. And the first thing on the agenda are some PRs and issues. So let's have a look at them. So this one, I guess, is waiting on you, Paolo, and then on Tom Bentley, mostly because you had some comments there. Yep. I guess that I was waiting for a kind of outcome about my comment about the ACL under the user package. And then Tom jumped again on the discussion. So it was just my only comment. So I guess we wait for Tom or we wait for Shubham or? Yeah, not sure if um, it's on Shubham or Tom now, but I will take another look and yeah, to get if I can approve and what I asked was addressed or not. Okay. Next PR is this one. So the user didn't go back since October 30th. So should we close it? It's basically one month now. So as far as I understood, he was doing something different in the end. So after you pinging him, he said, replace it with a link to the relevant documentation. I, I to be honest, I don't know what the last comment meant. Yeah, me neither. He also converted the PR to draft and then disappeared. So I don't know. Looks like it's abandoned. Let's close it and yeah, he will reopen. Okay, next one. So I think we talked about it with Paula and Paul on one of the other meetings, but I maybe wanted to raise it to attention to others uh, to have a look and share what they think about it and how does it really fit or doesn't fit into the Streamzy documentation. I can add a bit of context to this, Jakob, actually. So um, yeah. I was uh, I was looking back to see when when we added in this uh, this tuning content and it was actually almost well, actually around four years ago. So uh, it's been in a while. And I think uh, within those four years, we haven't actually made that many updates. Now, whether it, the the content is worth maintaining that's another question but uh, initially it was um, a request from tom bentley 
to to have something like this in the in the documentation so uh, the idea was we'd have some we'd highlight the important configuration and uh, try and steer away from um some of the more specialized uh, configuration options that was the idea common use cases basically yeah now is it useful is it popular is it worth maintaining i don't know but as i say it's uh, it's not uh, the content hasn't changed a lot in those those four years I think if we choose to to keep this kind of content, we also need to specify for each tuning option the re relevant metrics, right? Because you need to see the effect of what you're doing. And the, I think this should be something which is really common uh, that we often see applied. Uh, so not, not to specific use cases. So I guess everyone thinks about it a bit more and we get back to it next time or? Yeah, maybe yeah. We, should, we should also have some more people for review. I see only four of us right now. Well, I don't think it's useful to add more people to review if half of the people didn't really review it in the first place. But there seems to be more wider question around whether this content makes sense or not, which goes beyond reviewing the PR itself. Well, I guess nothing changed about it since month and a half. So everyone can think about it and it will probably be still open in two weeks in the next call. The next PR is, I guess, waiting for feedback from Tom. Yeah, yeah. So we discussed a little bit about this issue. Tom acknowledged that there is a, an issue. It's a small issue because it's only related to the error message, which is sometimes not correct. So, but the operation is correct. Uh, so I propose a fix. Uh, not sure Tom already looked at it closely because it maybe have some other ideas, which to me may be too, too complicated for, for the problem at hand. I don't know. That's my opinion. Uh, I'm still waiting for his feedback about this. Okay, so let's ping him there. I guess it's the same for this one, right? Yeah, yeah, this is almost ready, but uh, I'm waiting for uh, Kate's uh, approval because she raised some good point and also Tom needs to have this final word, but I think I addressed his comment.
Okay, next one. I guess that's waiting for Tom again, who had some comments. Jakub, you wrote here something. Oh, that's issue. It would come up in triage. Um, I suggest we leave this for the triage. Or I have it already open, so I guess we can discuss it. So... Uh, some guy opened this issue proposing that he can add some GitHub action that will do some code formatting and commit it back into the PR automatically. Uh, it's quite a long discussion if you didn't read it, but basically to me and Jakub, that doesn't sound like a good idea, but let's discuss it here as well. So sorry, as far as I understood, <clears throat> I haven't read all the discussion. So it's about adding some kind of pipeline in the CI CD and having this pipeline reformatting all the code. Yeah. And then committing it back into your PR. Uh, to be honest, I don't think that's a great idea. So we have our check style rules running when you compile locally and you have got errors and you can fix them based on our check style and you can open the PR in the shape that we think it's good formatting <clears throat> but yeah. not leaving to some automation to be honest there is also the downside that then you have to update your local repository branch I mean yeah yeah like to be honest I haven't seen anyone, like you don't know how many people decided not to contribute because our code formatting guidelines are too complicated. But I haven't seen anyone mention it, but there are a lot of people who struggle when suggestions are applied to kind of pull it to the local branch, rebase or merge it somehow and so on. So, so like that would be definitely something I would be afraid of, and to be honest, when I forgot to do the pull first, then I myself struggle with it as well because GitHub is terrible. Yeah, I agree. So, what I what I said there is that I don't have necessarily a problem if there is some make or Maven command which does the formatting, but the users have to basically run it manually before they open the PR. Yeah, I agree. So should we reject it with, with that, that we don't want to have such an action, but yeah, if he wants to add some local command to do that, then we are in general fine with it. Yes, for me. Yep. Yeah, I also think that you can instruct or configure your ID to do it automatically, right? So maybe just some note or some documentation about how to do it in the developer docs, something like that. I think the main challenge is that every project does it a bit differently. So yeah, I don't know if you really want to go and configure the ID for every single one. I don't really do it, to be honest. No, me too, but maybe some, some user, some contributor would like to have it, I don't know.
So like this, does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, fine with me. Okay, does anyone have any other PRs to discuss? If not, I don't think there are any new proposals since last time. Uh, does anyone want to discuss any existing proposals or anything related to proposals? If not, then we have the issue triage. Ah, a lot of issues. There didn't seem to be much update since my command. The main issue was that the lock we were provided was badly sanitized, so it was basically unreadable. So I guess we can close it or we can give the user more time to provide lock which is either not sanitized or properly sanitized. Yeah, one of the last messages he already said that he was going to sanitize and provide, but it's last month. So let's just close it and if he wants, he will reopen it. Okay, next one. So this was discussed last time, but I'm not sure where exactly did we got since. I think that the end of the discussion was that, uh, yeah, Keith agreed with us that we already have these GMX options, <clears throat> as you suggested. And in the end, there is nothing more that we can do. Yeah, Paolo, that's a, that's a correct summary. So like this and we close it. Yep. I guess Kate's not here. Yes, this was the issue. Uh, 
I'm not entirely sure what the last message from her meant, whether it meant that this should be closed or... Should we wait for our next call if maybe Kate will be? Yes, on? yeah. Okay. So you commented on this, Paolo. Yeah, because it seems that, it, so he was complaining about this duplication in names, but of course it's not something that the Kubernetes API can do, right? <clears throat> I'm not aware of any feature for that. Yeah, so the only thing that you have right now is going through the log of the operator raising. Yeah. Well, you could use validation webhook, of course, but. Oh, yeah. They cause all kinds of issues on their own. So should we close it or what is it are you suggesting? Yeah, I think that we just, we can of course mention what you said about webhook, but I will just close it. So like this. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the logs here didn't suggest that the operator is rolling the pods. So it's not really clear what it was, if it was something else. So I'm not sure there's much we can do about this at this point. So I guess we can ask him again to provide more information what he meant with this enable restart or we can close it. Maybe just two weeks, so let's give him more time. Okay. So this is a user who would like us to generate ECDSA certificates. 
instead of the RSA certificates we normally use. That does not seem to be like an unreasonable requirement for me, but I wonder what might be the consequences and so on, whether it needs to have a... I guess there will have to be some API to enable or disable it, so there probably should be a proposal. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's reasonable to to have a way to configure algorithm and key sites uh, other than using our default. So proposal is needed. I don't think it's uh, higher in our priorities list. So maybe we can ask the user who opened the issue if he's interested to contribute to this. <clears throat> So like this? Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. That was what I was going to suggest. Yep. So like this. Yep. Okay, so needs triage, needs propose, and should we add help on it as well? Or yes, yes. Okay. Next one is one of the remaining issues in the craft support in Kafka Roller. Uh, I guess we want to have this implemented. It doesn't seem to have any functional consequences, but the logging seems to be a bit weird. So I guess we want to have this fixed. Yeah, sure. Maybe we can ask Tina if she plans to work on it. Okay. Paulo, I guess this one is for you. Let me take a look. Well, actually, <clears throat> actually, um, so it was something that we were discussed in the past. Um, before, when I have got merged the Craft Kafka Roller integration, so this PR9146 in my branch working on migration, it turned out that uh, the controller, so the, the roller needs to ask for the quorum leader, so using the described quorum, only when uh, the brokers are already out of Zookeeper, they are full craft. 
and uh, everything works in that case. So the current code using the describe quorum is working. So my migration stuff is already working. So I'm not sure we need something here. I can double check. Uh, I didn't notice that uh, an issue was open for this. So should you check with Kate and we leave it open for next time or close yes. it if it's not needed? No, 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 yes, yes. Let's leave this open. Uh, I will just write my comments here about what I just said um, so that maybe there is nothing to do. I, I think that Kate uh, opened this uh, after some discussions offline, but before the craft Kafka roller PR was merged. Okay. So this is an issue opened by user who ran into NP exception in the custom authentication configuration. He originally suggested this is a validation issue and we should use the cell validation rules. I think we need to check how we would actually use the rules, but there seems to be bug with the null pointer exception. So maybe I would suggest to use this issue for the null pointer exception. And I will open a new enhancement issue to consider the cell validations and all its aspects. So that we have it kind of separated, one for the bug and one for the possible enhancement. Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay, so like this maybe. Yep. And I will open the second issue later. Okay. The next one. So this is from some user who runs free or old Strumzy version and is surprised that it doesn't work on Kubernetes release done a few years later. I already commented a lot on the issue, so I let someone else decide what to do with it now.
So it looks, looks like they didn't share their code changes to discuss or anything like that. So I don't think they are planning to suggest any so change. It does, doesn't matter the code changes are in Streams version, which is three years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. Maybe they figured out something, some improvement in the latest, in the on the main on the main branch. I don't know, but no, they it, has didn't nothing, anything. it has basically not not much to do anymore with the code which was there. Yeah, I think we can close it. I don't. I don't see any reason to let this open. Yeah, to be honest, I don't think that we can do much. Uh, I was reading his comment about having stateful set running without issue for five years and more, and it's going to work for 10 years and more. But it's a totally different stuff. Yeah, it, it's not an operator with all the complexity yeah. of an operator. So should we close it? Yeah, maybe we are going to, to lose a, a user, but even last comment anyway, thanks for all your work on the project. Good luck. Okay. And the next issue actually I opened based on a comment Kate gave me on one of the ERs. We still have the things like Kafka state full set name in the API module in the in the resource classes. And it's a bit weird because we use it in some places for upgrading for the stateful set name, then sometimes it's used for the streams pod set name, but not really much anymore because of the node pools. And then we actually use it for the for the labels. Uh, so I guess like I don't know if there's something to do right now, but we should think about what do we want to do with these things. Also in relation with that being in the API module, which should in general be API, but yeah, it's clearly not really like these classes, for example, are not really public API level because they names have not always that much meaning and are not always stable. So I don't know, I guess it would be easy to say, let's rename it to something else, but but maybe we should think a bit more about what do we want to do with these methods and these classes. So you are wondering about having something more than just renaming, so we kind of refactoring. I don't know, like, like you can just think about what to rename it to, but it's also like the idea of having this in the API module. I know that it's used by QE in the system tests and so on. So it's, don't think we currently have a better place where it should be, but at the same time, it's. I don't think we treat it as a public API, really. Like we do the CRD classes, so I don't know if if it makes much sense. Can we can we start with just renaming in order to avoid confusion, having stateful set, 
and then maybe having uh, more thinking and something more later just because yeah it can make confusion <clears throat> yeah having okay still. You know, it's, it's not something with a high priority, but at least renaming could avoid confusion in people's minds. Okay. Should we mark it as a as a good start? Mm, yep, maybe yes, yeah. Okay, and that's it for the triage. Anyone else has any other issue to discuss? If not, then I guess the next point is the proposal to archive the topic encryption subproject, uh, as there's not really much activity and nobody seems to contribute there, or we don't know about anyone planning to contribute to it. And Keith spoke with the with Chris as the original contributor, and he's not intending to put more work into it either. So. Should we archive it? For me, yes. <clears throat> what would be the process? Does it need a proposal? Uh, did we archive or... something else in the past? I'm sure we did. I guess if nothing else, we should not just kind of archive it based on this meeting, but we should at least give it some more time for those who are not on the call or or something like that to provide feedback yeah sure <clears throat> so we archived the stream the lab the stream the admin stream the ui to be honest i don't remember proposal to archive them but uh so should we wait for next community call if someone comes up with something against it and if not archive it yes uh thanks for talking with uh with chris Key. no problem jakob Okay, and that brings us to the end of the agenda. Anyone has any other business? Anything else to discuss? Anything else to talk about? Uh, just saying that not for the projects that I mentioned. Um, so Streams Lab, Admin and UI. We had the proposal around Devergate and Remove Mirror Maker extension. And there it's mentioned that after the release, uh, 
clearly deprecated and archive the extension repo. So if you want to have proposal, we can. No, 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 no. I'm just proposal. saying. No, I maybe... guess one difference is that the mirror maker extensions were a done thing which was actually used. It was no, yes, like yes, something yes, was exactly. Basically, never completed. Yes, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, that that's exactly what I was going to say. So, uh, it's not something that we need the proposal. Uh, just so it's not kind of related to this, but we didn't archive the mirror maker two extension yet. So it's mentioned in the proposal, but it's not archived. Just to get if we, we missed something here. Because it's mentioned on the 0.28 release. So it's 10 release in the past. <clears throat> I can archive it if you want. Well, yeah, because it's something that uh, we mentioned in that peer, in that proposal, right? So we should do. If you can, yes, please do. Okay, archived. Uh, anyone, anything else? If not, then thanks for joining and see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye. Dear bye folks, all. thanks. Bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.